Well, Merry Christmas and welcome to the Christmas Eve service at Grace Church. Now this is a unique service for a couple different reasons. Number one, people from all over our local community, city, state, and even throughout the country are coming together as one church to worship, which when you stop and think about it is a really, really cool thing. Number two, the Christmas Eve service is not just any other service. On Christmas Eve, we celebrate the profound and generous love of God as revealed in the incarnation, the birth of Jesus. So we have a very special service plan that revolves around the Christmas story as recorded in the book of Luke. And to help tell this story, we will utilize scripture, songs, visual arts, lighting of candles, and even the spoken word. So I wanna encourage you to engage by listening, singing, reflecting, and praying to the extent that you are comfortable. And at the end of the service, we're actually gonna have a special appearance of our virtual choir as they will lead us in singing our favorite Silent Night. But before we jump into that service, I want to take a quick moment and just say thank you. See, one of our core values at Grace is mission. And we believe that we are called to be the church, to bring light into the darkness and hope to the hopeless. In fact, in 2020, as hard as it's been, your faithful generosity has paved the way for the administration of the gospel. Over the past 12 months, we have given away more than $100,000 to our missional partners. On top of that, we've given away hundreds of pounds of dry goods and groceries to Hope Clinic. We've helped build multiple houses with Habitat for Humanity. We've supported Avalon Housing and their mission to provide shelter to the homeless. And we've spent countless hours serving alongside and supporting Hesed Community Church in reaching the Brightmoor community in Detroit. Well, God is using your radical generosity to change lives. So it seems very appropriate that as we celebrate Christmas, a time in which God's radical generosity was on full display, that we would follow His lead and that we would give generously. So tonight, we're actually taking a special offering where 100% of everything that comes in is going to our local missional partners. So at any point throughout this service, you can give by texting a gift to 84321, or you can always give through our secure website. So now, as the service begins, I wanna encourage you just to sit back, relax and worship as we celebrate the greatest story ever told, the story of Emmanuel, God with us. Today, we want to take some time to read the Nativity story together. So you can follow along at home. I'll be reading out of Luke chapter two, or um, you can just close your eyes and listen as I read the Christmas story. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there was no guest room available for them. And there were shepherds, living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Keeping this, this 
This is Christ the King, whom shepherds guard and angels sing. Haste, haste to bring him, Lord, the babe, the Son. with us today as we sing out these carols. Yeah. 
see him whose birth the angels sing. Come adore on bended knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Sing it out. The Christmas story continues in Luke 2, verse 13. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in a manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at the things that they had said. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told just like the shepherds, we want to take some time praising God and bringing glory to Him for all that He has done. So join us now in singing, O Holy Night. O Holy Night, the stars are brightly shining. It is the night of our dear Savior's birth. Long lay the world in sin and error pining, till He appeared and the soul felt its worth. A thrill of hope, the weary world rejoices, for yonder breaks a new and glorious morn. Divine, oh, 
divine When love arrives only night In the book of Isaiah chapter 9 we read this the people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who dwelt in a land of deep darkness, on them has light shone. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the increase of his government and of peace there will be no end. On the throne of David and over his kingdom, to establish it and to uphold it with justice and righteousness from this time forth and forevermore. Over the past four Sundays, we've spent time reflecting on the hope, peace, joy, and love that Christ's birth brought to the world. His birth in a small town and a small country all those years ago changed the world forever. The prophet Isaiah proclaimed a time when those who walked in the shadows would see a great light. A light would shine and a child would be born to us. But the season for watching and waiting is over. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. This is the light of the world and the darkness cannot extinguish it. Today, Instead of celebrating what Christ brought to the world, we celebrate the Christ child himself and his willingness to come into the world in order to be Emmanuel, God with us. We celebrate our God who put on human form so that he could bring hope, peace, joy, and love, but more importantly, so that we could be reconciled to him. So would you join me in praying the words on the screen aloud? Jesus, Son of God, let the hope of your birth move us. Let your peace still us. Let your joy stir us. Let your love lead us. Mighty God, thank you for coming this day to us. Let every corner of our hearts shine with your grace so that we can overflow with your presence. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, tonight is Christmas Eve, and what I want to do is begin by telling a story of the Carol Silent Night, because it's really a, a story of a miracle. It begins on December 24th, 1818, in a small village in Austria, where Father Joseph Moore was getting ready for Christmas Eve services that night, when he discovered that mice had eaten through the bellows of the organ and completely destroyed it. Well, in horror, he frantically ran back home and, and grabbed a, a poem that he had previously written about the birth of Christ and uh, ran to his friend and local schoolmaster, Franz Gruber, who was also the church organist. And he said to him, Franz, the church organ has been destroyed. Here, quick, take this poem and write a tune that can be played on guitar for tonight's Christmas Eve service. Well, that night, Joseph Moore and Franz Gruber uh, since they couldn't do real music on the organ, performed Silent Night on guitar. And lo and behold, it was a miracle. In fact, here is the original composition written by Franz Gruber of the carol Silent Night. You see this last minute rush job, this poor makeshift replacement for real music actually turned out pretty good. It's sort of like in school when you wrote a pa paper that was due uh, the night before and you still got a B plus on it. I wouldn't recommend that, by the way. Well, tonight, all around the world, in hundreds of different languages, people are lighting candles and singing this song. And as the simple song leads people to focus on Jesus, it ushers in 
peace on earth, if only for a few moments tonight. So the real miracle behind Silent Night isn't the last minute rush job. It's actually the simple story behind it all. The power of simplicity. You see, the words were written by a local priest from a small village. The music was written by a local school teacher. And at the world premiere of, uh, of this song on Christmas Eve 1818, there was no choir to sing, no worship band to play. There was just the priest, the school teacher, and a guitar. Now, fast forward 96 years to Christmas Eve 1914. World War I is raging all across Europe and it's trench warfare. That's where so soldiers uh, shoot at each other from trenches that they had dug in the ground. And the land between the two armies was called no man's land. And you didn't go there unless you want to get shot. Well, on Christmas Eve, the German soldiers had been hunkered down in the trenches and they were just tired of the war. They were missing family. They were longing for home and they just wanted a little bit of Christmas cheer. And so they decided that they were going to put up a little Christmas tree and light a candle. And then they began to sing Stille Nacht, Heilige Nacht. And the British soldiers on the other side of the front heard the singing and they recognized the tune and they began to chime in as well in English. Silent night, holy night. And the next thing you know, somebody climbs out of the trench into no man's land. And then somebody else, and then somebody else. And then German and British soldiers met in the middle of the battlefield. They shook hands. They embraced, they exchanged gifts, anything they had, like candy, cigarettes, alcohol. They even took buttons off their uniforms and shared them with each other as souvenirs. And then they worked together to bury the dead. They held a joint service, both British and German armies, praying together for the souls of friend and foe alike. And the next morning, on Christmas Day, they played football. That's soccer to us Americans. See, nobody wants to sit out of the game. So they literally had dozens of men on each team that day. You see, this Christmas Eve truce of 1914 uh, lasted for several days until the generals at their respective headquarters found out about it and then sent stern orders to the troops. Hey, knock off all this foolishness and get back to war and killing each other. Here's the thing. Even though that peace didn't last too long because of human sin, at least... For a few days, Jesus came into that world and brought peace on earth. You see, in a few moments, we're going to sing this well-known Christmas carol, and we are going to experience the hope and the joy and the peace and the love of Christ uh, through this song. But there's one thing that really bothers me, and I hope this doesn't ruin the song for you, but friends, when Jesus was born, it was not a silent night. I mean, think about it. How many of you have been present at the birth of a baby? Was it a quiet moment? I doubt it, right? Mom is screaming. The nurses are saying, push, push. Dad is shouting encouragement and support. Either that or he's fainting somewhere in the corner of the room. The doctors come in. The baby is born. The baby's crying. Mom is crying. Dad's trying to get out his phone to capture the moment on video. Now imagine that happening outdoors in an animal stall. No doctors, no nurses, no fetal monitor, no epidural. Does that sound like a silent night to you? And think about this. Mary and Joseph were in Bethlehem because there was a census. And Bethlehem was crowded to the hilt. I mean, there were people everywhere. The hotels and taverns were all full. And, and what do people do when they're far from home and, and they don't want to be there and they have nothing to do? Well, they drink and they get drunk. And they carouse and they fight. They pass out in the streets and they cause all kinds of trouble. Now, does that sound like a silent night to you? And then think about this, Roman soldiers. You see, in the town where I grew up, uh, all the churches one year came together and did a walkthrough nativity called Return to Bethlehem. And as a strapping young teenager, I had to play the part of a Roman soldier. And my job was to intimidate people as they were walking through so they would feel something like how people felt in the land of Judea at the time of Christ. And people would jump, being startled whenever I said my line as I shouted to them, move along, keep the streets clear. 
Well, when Mary and Joseph went to Bethlehem, there were Roman soldiers all over the place that reminded them of the brutal conquering force that occupied their country in the moment. And who knows, maybe there was a soldier standing right beside the stable saying, move along, keep the streets clear. Now, does that sound like a silent night to you? And then think about this, animals. Now, when a horse whinnies, you can hear it from miles away. Or, or when a cow moos, right, from far away, it, it's a sweet sound. But right next to you, that's not really pleasant. And besides that, even if the animals were quiet that night, there's nothing you can do to get rid of the smell of animals in a small manger or a small stable. You see, farm animals, they're not housebroken. So... Does that sound like a, a silent night to you? And then think about this. Things finally settle down. The animals finally get quiet. The baby falls asleep. Joseph fluffs up the hay, places Jesus in the manger. So quiet, so precious. Even Mary is drifting off to sleep. And at last, Joseph can relax. And then here they come, unannounced. The shepherds, excuse me, ma'am. A bunch of angels told us that we're supposed to see a baby here. Oh, is that him laying in the cow feed? Well, look at that. Isn't that something? And then the horse wakes up and starts to whinny. The cows start to moo. And then one of the sheep that came with the shepherds gets scared and starts to ba. And the next, and the thing about sheep is when one starts to do something, all the rest have to follow. And so next thing you know, all the sheep are going ba, ba, ba. Maybe a Roman soldier walks by and yells, hey, what's going on here? The drunk people are walking by carousing and the streets are milling about. Does that sound like a silent night to you? Instead of silent night, maybe it should be noisy night, chaotic night painful night, smelly night. And then think about this. That's exactly the entire point. You see, Jesus didn't come to a perfect world. Jesus came to our world. And our world is a mess. I mean, especially in 2020, right? Not only is there the, the noise of war and strife and violence, but there is the pain of brokenness, the pandemic, you know, mental and, and, and emotional anguish, the chaos of confusion. There's just so much the stench of sin. That is the world we all live in. And that's the world that Jesus came to. Jesus didn't come to a perfect world. He came to our world. And the gospel of John tells us why. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever, so, whoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. And see, the world God loves, it's not the perfect world that we see in some sanitized nativity scene. The world God loves is the real world. The one where babies cry, animals stink, people hurt and get hurt. Jesus didn't come to a perfect world. He came to our world. So here's a question I want to ask you tonight. Has Jesus come into your world? Have you invited Jesus into your world by surrendering your life to him? Maybe tonight your life is as messy and as chaotic as Bethlehem was on that not so silent night. Maybe you're like a woman giving birth. Your life is just so full of pain right now. Maybe you got crowds of crazy people all around you, right? Maybe you're dealing with addiction, yours or somebody else's. Maybe you're being oppressed, not by Roman soldiers, but by an overbearing, overbearing parent, by a tyrant of a boss, maybe even an abusive spouse. Or maybe it's World War I in your life right now, except it's not the Germans and the British, it's you and your spouse or it's you and your kids, or it's you and the people you're going to have dinner with tomorrow on Christmas Day. Jesus wants to come into that world. Maybe you feel like your life has lost direction and you're not sure what to do. You, you don't even, you're, you're confused. You don't even know what you believe in anymore. Jesus wants to come into that world. So why don't you let Jesus into your world tonight? Would you do that? 
in this special place on this holy night, ask the child who was born in Bethlehem to be born in you today. If you would like to do that, if you would like Jesus to enter your world, pray after me these words from the fourth verse of the song, O Little Town of Bethlehem. The prayer will be up on the screen. And so if this is your first time or not, let's close in prayer by repeating this, the words of this song together. O holy child of Bethlehem, descend to me, I pray. Cast out my sin and enter in. Be born in me today. Amen. If that was your first time praying that, would you please let us know? We just want to rejoice and celebrate with you. There are two other ways that we are going to respond today to, 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 to the, uh, the message. The first is, again, just as a reminder to not forget, if you wanted to give as an, uh, an offering to our missional partners, these are people and organizations and ministries all around the world uh, uh, spreading the good news of Jesus. And so if you want to do that, again, Zach mentioned that earlier today. Uh, the second way we are going to respond is by singing the song that we just talked about, Silent Night, Holy Night. Let's sing and worship him today. We